Hey fellow Vault Dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you tier list for all available allies. Did you know there are 16 allies available at this point? I didn't even realize it multiplied so much, but I was asked a lot to tell you which ones are worth it, which ones are S tier, which ones are turtle picks. So I will do it going one by one by those ally stations and which ones, in my opinion, are the best. So first we have a Salmon's Medic Station. Let me place it. I will try to place every single one if possible, we'll see. The point is you can have only one ally at once in your camp, what can be a little bit of a problem. So that's the uh, Salmon Hardy arriving when you place his station. That's how it looked like in game. And he's a Brotherhood ally, as you can see by the lab code. You can chat with every single ally that you have at your camp. I will not go over all the dialogues. That's probably not the point why you are placing the ally at your camp. And as you can see here, he will provide you with multiple medical services if you want them. He can heal you, heal your rats, remove diseases. Although he will charge for all those services. And as you can see, healing will cost you 10 cups. Like he's not charging much, but still not something that most people will need in the game. Then as any ally, he will offer you some vendor services, uh, which means he will sell stuff to you, not other way around. They never purchase stuff. And as you can see, Thanks his again. vendor inventory is very simple, nothing special to look for. So in my opinion, he's a... Uh, Tier C ally, as there is nothing particularly interesting about this guy outside of... He can look nice with some camps. Next ally on the list is Mole. And Mole is a super mutant that can hang out at your camp. And you can ask him to help you train. As well, he will offer you some stuff for the trade. And important uh, here is occasionally he's selling Grognak the Barbarian magazine and Unstoppables uh, magazine. If you are after those, that's a notable plan on his list. His bonus itself, uh, his training, is only 30 minutes long. It reduces the weight of melee weapons, gives you some rat resistance and one strength. So it's a really small bonus. I will classify this ally as tier B. Next ally is Daphne. Now what Daphne will offer to you. She will offer you some small buff. When you ask, she can help you with. I can wish you good luck. And it gives you extra luck and directional audio near the magazines. It's a short lasting buff as other ones. And now for the sale options. Notable mention again, Grognak the Barbarian. So she's selling those magazines. She's selling some Nuka Colas as well. So. Yeah, that is something a little bit useful. The buff itself, unfortunately, only 30 minutes. Luck increased by 2 and directional audio in your magazines. That's it. So that's another tier B ally. Next ally is Joey. Joey comes with like the biggest camp item. His stage is quite large. Joey himself will offer you quite nice buff. When you ask him to roast you, he will roast you and give you a buff. And for his inventory, you can find some items and he will sell some live and laugh magazines. So this is big. Being able to occasionally purchase very sick after live and laugh magazines. That's quite big if you don't have any. You know which ones I mean. The ones that give you more food buffs for experience farming. Not the number five, unfortunately, but he has different issues. So you just need to keep waiting when those appears. Joey's buff is better as it 60 minutes in duration reduces staggers. Fire, melee, explosion damage reduced by 10%. So really good buff, to be honest. One hour, really good buff. I will put him easily as S tier ally because of those live and laugh magazines and roast, roast proof buff. So that's a turtle pick. Joe is a turtle pick. Next ally is Scarber, and this guy Still gathering that will offer you very nice buff when you ask him for help. 
I mean, need a few services, please. And please give me Mothman blessing. Oh, holy Mothman. And he will give you the Trailed blessing. The About his up? inventory. He's selling some Greetings, stuff. Ryan. I don't see anything usually particularly important in his inventories. I would say not very useful vendor, but his buff is good. His buff is blessing of the true Mothman at last one hour and it's 5% bonus to your experience. Uh, it's worth to mention it's exactly the same buff and you will get from a Muffman, so they do not stack. You can either have a buff from a Muffman himself or from your ally. They do not stack because this is the one and the same buff. Although this blessing is way easier to get than wait for event to spawn that will give you a Muffman blessing. Due to the fact that this bonus is not huge and there is nothing interesting to buy, I would put this ally as tier A. Next ally is Leo and Leo will Don't offer you a special services. Don't push yourself too hard out there. I mean need of your of services as every ally and now you can give Leo a new Coca-Cola. And what he accepts a wide selection of new Coca-Colas for a lot of cool buffs. And I have a video with all his buffs, if you are interested, I will try to link it in here. But the biggest one is Nuka Shine, but he does accept only regular Nuka Shine. So it needs to be in the middle of the fermentation, that's a tricky part. But this buff is absolutely Cheers. the most powerful all Leo has Nuka to Cola. offer. Cheers to you. Other worth to mention, he can offer you an experience buff from Nuka Cola Cranberry and his experience buff stuck on top on, of every other buff. So either you are after experience or AP refresh or other bonuses, Leo gets you cover. Leo's trade inventory, surprisingly, he's not really selling new Coca-Colas, he's selling some other random uh, stuff that's not really useful. But here what he usually care. His buff is the big thing to get him for. And because his buff, Nuka Inspiration, you can have one at a time from him. He will only accept one Nuka Cola per day. This one, AP Regen plus 25%. I'm not running any other AP Regen buffs, so let me show you how this buff works. I'm just using a jetpack. Look at my ah. AP Regeneration. All I'm using is Leo's buff. Insanely good. Insanely good. It's equivalent of having a full set of armor with AP Regen. The strongest buff in the game for AP regeneration. So Leo is definitely S tier ally. It's absolute turtle speak. I love this ally. Next ally is Sam. Boss? And here what Sam will offer you. Can I get a tune up? Right and on. that's what it's Sam offers you. Tuning ah. up. And his trading inventory contains need, a lot of bulk scrap. So if you need to stockpile on bulk, he offers that. I don't know how important that is. He offers some new Coca-Colas too. Like you can see his inventory is long. He even sells some sugar oh, bombs, what are hard to come. So want. I'm definitely buying that as I just place him. <laughs> I'm buying that, a lot of other stuff. Like his inventory is the biggest. So that's definitely a plus for him. Unfortunately, tune up buff is not so good. It says you can repair weapons, armor and power armor to 130% of normal maximum condition. That's terrible buff, one of the worst. Therefore, unfortunately, this ally is tier C. It's barely any usefulness into it, tier C ally. Next one is the latest ally, which is Grandma. You can have Grandma at your camp and Grandma's service is cooking for you. Here, vendor inventory contains brain bombs occasionally, so some rare food can be found in her inventory. I'm of course buying that. And like bathrobe, I don't know why she's selling bathrobe. Some rare recipe occasionally will appear in her inventory too if you are after those and she's selling those chips. So yeah, that's definitely a plus. And grandma's bath is grandma's home cooked meal that lasts one hour and it basically stops hunger and thirst for this one hour. It doesn't increase, so it's equivalent or 
the perfect bubblegum effect, which is good. It's not insanely important, but it is good. And as well, if you are wondering how can I rotate all allies and get all the effects, at the end of the video I will show you the fastest method how to switch between allies and get all the buffs, if so, for some reason you need them. As you can do it, you can use all the allies, just not at once. So, Grandma, tier A. This buff is good, the stuff she's selling is good, not insanely good, but good, so tier A for sure. Next ally is Katrin, and she no, offers a buff on. herself too. She will offer you help with gun loadout. In her inventory, she will sell you some ammo, some other stuff. I don't think there's any stuff particular worth mentioning outside of the fact she's selling insane quantity of plasma cores for a lot of caps. Well, I don't know how important it is. I don't see any important stuff to purchase in her inventory. And her buff is Alien Astronomer. Half an hour buff, perception increased by one, energy weapon ammo weights 50% less, short lasting buff, nothing good in her inventory. I would say she's like tier D ally. You don't really need it for anything. Next one will be Wanderer. Wanderer is one of the uh, classic I allies, I would say. So she will offer you daily quest if you choose to have her in your camp. She's not really giving any buff outside of the quest. Quest can be sometimes giving you a legendary weapon, sometimes nothing really useful. So I would say the classic allies with daily quests are all tier C. It's some usefulness to it. I don't see much at my point in game. Your classification can be different. Next one is Foragers. That's again, Forager is a classic ally, so the same thing, I don't even need to place it. Then there is a Beckett, again, main quest, main quest line allies do the same thing, they can give you daily quest. Additionally, Beckett will have some inventory. You really oh, my Beckett spawn inside the bus well, for some reason, that's okay. You, you can say that you are thirsty to Beckett. Sure. And that's how you access his inventory. He will actually not give you any drink for free. The good thing, he occasionally carry a lot of regular Nuka Colas that are needed for crafting Nuka grenades. So the best grenades in game requires Nuka Cola as ingredients. So that's worth to mention about Beckett, which will put Beckett a little bit higher than other allies. I would put him as tier C. Next ally is Raider Punk, another classic ally that can offer you daily quests and that's it, so nothing worth to mention about it. Tier C ally. Then another questline ally, when you place this console. And again, Commander Daguerre will offer you a daily quest if you need it. And important thing about Sophia, I think you can romance her, kind of, so that's that about Sophia. When you do her quest line and everything, then she keeps giving you daily quests. Sometimes quest related vendor can pop up at your camp if she's your ally. Nothing incredibly important about her. Another tier C ally. Next one is Xerxos with his spaceship. The Xerxos is a space explorer that looks technology. kind of like, he would fit into Starfield, if not the fact he's a ghoul. And he oh, offers know. some services, and he can shoot you with a ray gun. One burst of gamma rays. And that's his usual inventory, some ammo, it can be some regular stuff, some bulk, mm, anything particular worth to mention somehow. He's selling paddle ball strings. Uh, not really anything important from him that you couldn't get otherwise or that you need at your camp. So, nope, nothing super important from his inventory. His buff is the Bulonian Flight. Agility increased by one, fast traveling cost 50% fewer caps. If you really plan to do a lot of fast travel jumps in next 30 minutes, Maybe you can use his buff, otherwise he's not very useful, so I would say 
tier C or D. Next ally will be Yasmin. And Yasmin is your private chef at your camp. And normally she will feed you, but if you are not hungry, she will refuse to give you any more food. So she care about your weight. You can ask her about cooking to access her trading inventory. Buy some recipes, please. And in her inventory, you will occasionally buy some rare, complicated, craftable food for experience boost and so on. Even includes some food items that cannot be crafted and can only be obtained for her from her inventory. Not this time around, but it is happening. Can take a while as well as she's selling a selection of rare recipes that are rotating as well. So she's a good ally because of that reason that some of her food items can give you poison resistance as there is there is no food that you can craft for poison resistance. So she's like one of the best sources of that. Unfortunately, not every time in her inventory, it's rather rare still. And her buff is not a buff, she just can feed you. So that's way worse than grandma. As grandma will at least give you one hour buff, she will not. So I will still put her as tier B because of those rare food items that otherwise cannot be obtained, but that's it. And that was the last ally, so let me show you how to quickly rotate between different allies if you want different bonuses. Let's say I want grandma and then I want another bonus. So when I place grandma, she will appear and she will be running towards her chair. You need to capture her on the run, grab her buff, then exit the conversation, quickly open the build menu, scrap her item and place a next ally that you want to use. That's how you do it. If you let them run into their station, you will not be able to scrap it because it will be in use. If you want a quick rotation of buffs, you need to capture them on the way. I will show you what's the problem when he arrives here. Like if you let Leo sit on his desk, look at that now. I can no longer scrap his item. So it's important to capture them on the way to the desk to avoid waiting for like Leo to start wandering around. Sometimes it can take forever. So that's the way you get all the buffs and you can see me now rocking all the buffs from allies that unfortunately most of them not really good. Let me know what you think. Which allies are you missing? Which allies do you need to add to your collection? Or are you disappointed with those short lasting bonuses? I don't know why we have short lasting bonuses when we have some good ones that last one hour. No idea, but it is how it is. And that being said, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.